Hi. If you make notes, you probably know an app that's called Obsidian that allows you to make those notes and then visualize and identify connections between them so that you can then later navigate through your knowledge and connect your ideas in new ways. However, the default graph view that shows you the network of all your ideas is not very useful inside Obsidian. In this video, I will show you a new plugin that we developed at Infranodus, the Obsidian plugin, that allows you to use the advanced network science insights that Infranodus gets in order to visualize your bolt in Obsidian and all the separate pages inside. Infranodus allows you to see what are the main ideas, how they connect to one another, what clusters of ideas or topics they form, so you have an overview on a bigger level, and most importantly, you can also identify the gaps in your structure, and that's where you can focus your attention in order to generate interesting research questions or ideas inside. And you can do this by yourself. I use the built-in AI, GPT-4, in Infranodus to connect the parts of the graph that you think should be connected in order to push your thinking further. If you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching, and I will demonstrate step by step. So, for example, here I have uh, some Readwise excerpts uh, from the books that I was reading. And this one is called Saturn Island by Tom McCarthy. And you will have a button here, Visualize in Infranodus, and also here, and also at the top of the page. So you can activate it where you want. By the way, tell us where this button should be, if you're testing it, where you prefer to have it. And what you see here is an amazing thing, I think, because you don't just visualize the backlinks in the documents, how other extensions do but it visualizes the content of this document. So even if you don't have backlinks, you will get some really meaningful information from it. Another big difference to other graph view tools inside Obsidian is that you can actually see which concepts are most important directly. So for example, here I see that the quotes from this book are talking about man and time a lot, right? And then I can go here and see that it's about an anthropologist. So it reminds me actually who is the main protagonist of this fiction book and how he's thinking about something and so on. And then I might find out, okay, I'm interested in what he's saying about memory and time. So I can select those two nodes on the graph and then I can click locate and the system will automatically find the statement uh, from those quotes, which is talking about this concept of memory and time. And here he's talking about how behind it, I picture it's hordes of bits and bytes and megabytes all beavering away to get the requisite data to me behind them and so on. And then he's talking about memory and time in the end of the statement. So that's like a really nice way to jump into a really interesting part of your highlights um, by looking at the graph and choosing what's relevant to you at the moment. Then what you can also do is jump into uh, memory itself. Actually, if you click here, you will see this arrow and you will jump into the page of memory and then it will show what the concept of memory what it's connected to uh, in the rest of your obsidian, right? So for example, here I see that there's something on hormone and stress. I can click here, see context, and then it will show me in which contexts uh, this combination of terms appears. So it's a really useful way to find out some new connections also. And then I can see here that there's a whole text on adaptation. So I will open this in context and then it reopens that page, uh, this other text on adaptation. And then I can also start querying this document. So, for example, I can go into topics and see high-level ideas inside. It's talking about adaptation and text and context and so on. So I have these high-level representations and I can also ask the system to generate a summary for me. So I can see what this text is about. And sometimes now it's bugging, so you kind of have to click it twice to really get the summary. Because first it gives you an interesting research question, uh, but you can also get it by clicking this button here, question. So, there is generating for me a summary of all those highlights very quickly, AI. Uh, and here it's talking about how it's the dynamics of adaptation and appropriation in literature. Okay, so it reminds me that it's this book about uh, the use of adaptation and appropriation. And in fact, it's a really interesting connection to the concept of memory in this original book, Satin Island, because it makes me think of the specific way of how this uh, evolution can be performed. So is a really great idea and what I can do is to actually go on the page of adaptation itself and click here and I will have the graph for adaptation but I can also go into edit mode and then um, write down my thoughts that in fact adaptation can be related to the notion of memory and anthropology in the sense that only through memory, you can adapt to new 
environments because you have to keep some information from before. So as you can see, I'm editing it as I go and then I click on the view and then it integrates this new idea into the graph. So there I can really then explore this concept further. And what I also like doing is that I can actually select adaptation and hide it from the graph. So it shows me everything around this term. So that helps me jump to the deeper ideas and you can slice off these layers if you click reveal underlying repeatedly until you get to the stuff that seem uh, a bit specific but interesting because it connects it in an interesting way right so for example here there's something about investment and political i can click here see in which context it's used and here i see that it's it's talking about how it's used uh, in politics so that's very interesting as you can see, the main difference with the default Obsidian Graph View or with other Graph View implementations is that Infranodus shows you the clusters of ideas, allows you to interactively change the graph so that you can cut off, for example, the top layer of ideas to see what's hiding underneath and use the advanced network science insights in order to generate your own prompts to yourself or to the AI, which will help you push those ideas further. So this can be really useful in any research. And I just want to show you how it's different from the traditional graph views because, for instance, you have these graph analysis tools that just show you, okay, a list of words. That's a little bit difficult. And uh, you also have uh, this nice one that I like actually juggle. Um, I don't know how to activate it now, but I think you can do it here. Open juggle, yeah. So you open adaptation, but then you see because we don't have any backlinks, it's not connected to anything. So. It's a bit difficult for the pages where you don't have backlinks yet, but to be fair to this, I will just try to find some page that has links. So here it's quite good for visualizing the links juggle. Um, I think it works well for that. I think even if you use the original graph view for A2S strategies, like you see that I have this page, um, I get lost a little bit. It gives me a good overview of everything I have. So that's good for like a general overview, but once I want to jump in, Juggle is good, but then what I like with Infranodus is that when you click uh, here, open an Infranodus graph, the same thing. Uh, you see, I, I kind of see connections of what it's talking about. So what are the actual concepts? Here I only see disturbance, instability, center of gravity. Here I see all those terms and I see that they're pages because they have this double bracket, so there's more information on them. But there's also the smaller parts like body, for example. So for example, let's say I want to talk about instability of the body and then when I click on this tool, I can click on context and then I can see uh, where it's talking about instability of the body. And then I click here and then um, I open that page. And if I want, I can also jump on the page of the body. And then you see here, I, I only see the connections that are made through backlinks to the body. But here I can also see uh, the main topics a little bit more. So I can see that it's connected to the body, intelligence, also pain, uh, expressing emotion. So it's a much more uh, precise map, so to say, of all those ideas. And you can really discover it if you click on topics here, it will actually give you AI generated topics uh, for all these clusters. So you can really clearly see what are the main ones, how they connect, and most importantly, what are the gaps. So for example, here we jumped from the body into this graph. And by the way, you see here, we just see what else it's connected to. So let me close Juggle. It's not so interesting, although it's nice. I like it. But um, here, if you have a, a representation of the topics, what you can do is to jump on the gaps and then it will identify the gaps between ideas that are not so well connected. So here it's saying that there are some notes on emotions and expressing emotions and then intelligence and science. And um, they are being discussed in relation to the concept of the body, which we see here but they're not so well connected. So how could we connect them better? And this is one of the most interesting propositions that Infranodus has, because when you identify this gap, you can click on AI advice question here, and then you will generate a question that will try to bridge those ideas together. And it's great because AI is helping you to think here. It's not generating content for you. So here it's asking, how can exploring the origins of our emotions through the lens of sensory and intuitive behaviors lead to a deeper understanding of adaptive resilience and regeneration observed in non-human life forms, such as grasses and planarian worms. So maybe emotions are some kind of adaptive mechanism. And if we like this idea, what we can do is click here, save clip, and then it's going to save it into your uh, more advanced Infranodus graph with all the different statistical qualities. And once you accumulate several ideas from here, uh, so for example, maybe you 
generate an idea here. So it will generate a question and then pose a, like an answer to it. It's kind of like an agentic model flow here, but here it's providing you an idea. And if you save this clip, it will go into the same graph as before. So then you can also gradually start building a structure of all the different um, ideas in relation to uh, this original document that you're analyzing through connections. So this is why it's really powerful and I think it will be really interesting for you to try if you use Obsidian uh, to visualize your ideas this way, generate some ideas. Let me know what you think about it, if you have any questions, if you have any wishes for what should work uh, better, what doesn't work, and also what you enjoy already so we know how to develop it further. And um, I just want to say also thank you to everyone who helped develop it, uh, James from Korea and uh, Alberto and Antonio and uh, Oleg uh, and Thomas with his feedback and Kate also. So thank you very much and I hope you enjoyed. You can try it on infernodos.com. Thank you. We open our Obsidian and then you go to settings and here you have community plugins and you need to turn this on because this will allow you to upload this demo version. And once you turn it on, then what you can do is to go into your finder or any file system you're using and you need to get into your um, Obsidian folder where you store your vault information and if you don't know where it is, you can find it here in Obsidian, open vault and then you would go to this vault and click reveal in finder. So then you would have exactly this folder shown here. And then once you reveal it in finder, you should show the hidden folder dot obsidian. You can activate it using the common shift dot on a Mac. And I will leave a link in the comment to this video so that you can read all the installation instructions also. And then once you go into plugins, there, you just need to copy the contents of this file, uh, the zip file that you will receive from us with the extension. Later, when you upload it through Obsidian, you will not have to do the steps. Uh, so here, you have Obsidian in front of Obsidian, and you just drag it there, and basically, it's the four files of the plugin. So once you do that, this plugin will be visible in your system as Infranodus, and then you just need to activate it and then go to settings and you will need to put your API key. And to do that, you would need to go to infranodus.com and log in. If you don't have an account, you can sign up. And we always recommend to sign up because we're bootstrapping this project and it takes a lot of time and energy to develop it. So I think you will really like the results and I hope that you will think that they're worth. And um, we also offer a special coupon for the people who watch this video where you can get a 50% discount lifetime on the basic and advanced plan. So that's a good opportunity to get this because it's limited to 100 offers. Um, but we would really like to invite you also to test it out. And there's also like a two week long free trial. So you can also try it for free. In any case, once you log in, you go to subscription and here you have your API key. So you just select it, copy it, and then you go back to Obsidian. I will change this key by the way later, so you will not be able to use it. And uh, GPT-4 here, or you can keep GPT-3.5 if you want it faster, but I prefer GPT-4, especially that it's available for free, so you don't need the, the OpenAI API here to use this most advanced model that they have, and then you can leave the rest uh, as default settings for now. Okay, I hope that you enjoyed watching this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. And also please subscribe to this channel so you can get informed about the new releases of this plugin and also in general about all the different stuff related to AI and networks and data visualization. Thank you.